Out to center. This is cranked. It's way back. It is gone! Welcome back to the Couch GM Podcast. Today I'm joined by Paul, aka Stitch God, on Instagram. He's doing something incredibly unique in the Seattle Mariners, Seattle sports, and really sports industry as a whole, in which he is repurposing various components of old jerseys and creating a new work of art. His jerseys are designed to stand out from the crowd, and today I'm excited to help share Stitch God's story. Big shout out to our sponsor in Black Label Supplements. They are a third-party tested, athlete-approved supplement company that has great products. If you wanna make sure that you will not be testing positive on a drug test if you're an athlete, go check out blacklabelsupplements.com. Use code COUCHGM for 15% off. Also make sure to check out the official lifestyle brand of baseball and baseballism. Mariners fans, they have a partnership with Ken Griffey Jr. They've got some really cool stuff on there. Use code COUCHGM for 15% off. And if you're looking to upgrade your home office or your man cave, you wanna track stocks, crypto, sports events, go check out glance-led.com. Use code COUCHGM for 15% off. And as always, if you're thinking of buying, selling, or refinancing, make sure to reach out to myself, the Couch GM, or visit lenderconnorweb.com to hit a home run with your mortgage financing needs. And with that, let's get into the podcast. Today, I'm joined by Paul, also known as Stitch God on, on Instagram. So first off, Paul, really appreciate you taking the time to join me today. Yeah, absolutely, bro. I'm really happy to be here. Yeah. So, I mean, your stuff, I've been following you for a while and it's kind of funny because this jersey that I'm wearing here, you know, I started my channel in December, 2021, late, 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 uh, 2022, September, October, I went into the Mariners team shop and went upstairs and was like, I need to get a custom Jersey for this couch GM thing. So, you know, I filled out the thing. turns out it was you that was sitting there. And so we met briefly, but you were like, That's cool, bro. I didn't know that. yeah, you're so see that oh dude that's sick yeah so you're like what's the last name and i was like the couch gm and you're like what and i was like yeah it's the couch gm it's my youtube channel whatever so yeah you made this jersey and then i got like two other custom jerseys after this the city connect and the the uh all-star game so that was the dude, first I time and, and then i kind of heard about you and saw you on instagram started following your stuff and it's really cool and wanted to get you on to kind of hear your origin story Oh, I really appreciate that. Uh, before we go into that, um, I do want to ask you, did I try to talk you out of putting the in front of Jeep Couch here? Yes. Okay. Cause that was like, a good call. I, it's pretty funny. It's pretty funny because doing that job, uh, you run into a lot of people that have a lot of ideas. You see custom jerseys and everybody's like, oh man, can I put 70 letters on the back? Like, can <laughs> I put, and it's like, it's like, yeah, you could, you could customize it any way that you want technically, but there's a fine line of where it looks nice. It looks clean. It looks even, it looks visually appealing. And then you start getting into a world where it doesn't look that way. And I try to at least say, Hey, <laughs> there was a guy, there was a guy not long ago who <clears throat> him and his wife, were, they came in, they hadn't been married yet and they were about to get married. So people normally do like Franklin 22 or they'll do like Franklin 2022. So they stand next to each other, whatever. I could get behind that. But this, they were trying to do Mr. I don't even remember the name, Mr. Priority Mail and future Mrs. Priority Mail. And I was like, wait a minute. When did you guys say you're getting married? And she's like, oh, in like two weeks. I'm like, so then you won't be future anymore. You'll just be Mrs. Priority Mail. And they're like, yeah, but we were thinking because the pictures, blah, blah. I'm like, well, you're about to spend 175 bucks on a jersey. Yeah. You should be able to wear it past that date. So I talked them out of that and I try my hardest. So I, I really guess that uh, to answer your question of how my origin story, man, where do you want to start on that? How far back are you trying to go, bro? Yeah. So, I mean, let's go back to the beginning. Cause I mean, I, I watched some reels today. Uh, you were on simply Seattle's podcast yeah. telling your story. So I know that you grew up in Buffalo and that around that 2001 season is when you started to follow the Mariners from the sounds of it with the sports yeah. illustrated ed edition. So let's start back there with how you got into sports initially the Mariners and then moving out to Seattle. Well, the first, well, the first thing that I really got into when it came to sports uh, being in Buffalo, I mean, I was too young to remember the Super Bowl times. I, and I also remember like distinctly 
bad memory, but and you don't you think you know why, but that's not why. I remember this my dad like who was my favorite player? What guy did I like? Smith or Thurman Thomas or anything like that. When I started getting into sports, I was a hockey guy, big time. As a little thing, Dominic Ashley was my fucking guy. That was that was who I first looked up to as like a sports like hero. And, and he was he still is like a god in Buffalo. And probably how I first got into sports. My dad has always really liked baseball. So I started getting more interested in baseball, like nine, ten years old. And then by the time I was like eleven, that was the two thousand one season. And you saw the you saw the story that I told about that, but I saw Sports Illustrated. It's funny. I think I have my Julio one sitting right here. And would have just inspired a little kid this year to be or whatever that was to become nice. a Mariner the same way that I was. And I saw this picture of this dude, and I and I, and I skimmed through the article, looked through the picture. But I've always wanted to be the open story of it. I've always wanted to be different in my own kind. Of, so. In Buffalo, my dad's a Red Sox fan, Rocky fan. Everybody talks about the Indians at the time. I kind of just was like, yo, I really want to be, like, different. And I remember my brother had the same thought. He became a Giants fan in 2002. And we, I kind of just started getting into it. But the first year, it was like, okay, yeah. But when I saw them play for the first time in 2002, and it was my first experience with – Major League Baseball and being in it, because I had gone to Bison games my whole life. I mean, the minor leagues, I mean, you know, you're going there for the for the ice cream and the cup at that point. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. whatever. And at that time, I didn't know, like, this guy was a big leaguer, that guy was, I didn't know, you know, I was a little kid. So but when I first went to Toronto to see the Mariners play, dude, man, and then just the whole experience for me, too, is when my grandfather was with us, my Uncle John. And my dad and my brother, and we all drove up from Buffalo, and, and it's like an hour and a half. And I remember seeing that, bro, I could, I, could, I could picture it all, dude. I remember seeing, like, the big buildings in Toronto, because that's a big city, dude. Yeah. That was my first, I was like 12 years old, and I remember seeing the big glass buildings. And I, was, I remember being in the back seat thinking, like, bro, all their buildings are glass. Like, what the, this is crazy. <laughs> and then. And then when you're driving on the QEW from Buffalo, like when you when you get towards like Mississauga area, like probably like 30 minutes from Toronto, there's like a school bus on a roof of the building, and that's how I, as I got older, I'm like, okay, now we're getting close and stuff like that. Things that I remembered, like oh, hey, this is my now, man. This is this is what I'm gonna do. I saw Aguirre hit, hit a home on that day, and Ichiro was my guy, so it was just like sick to see him play. John Olaru, fucking. All that whole 2000 team, it was so many that were like root for bowl. And I just got hooked after that, dude. And I can literally tell you like everything that led up to it. Because once I got into middle school, we were wearing the jerseys. People were like, Mariners, what are you, what was that? <laughs> I remember there was an ongoing joke I had with a couple of my buddies who are also Mariners fans. That like, like the girls in school would be like, Oh, who's your favorite team again? The Mariners? Like, I don't remember. Like, who's that? Like, who is that? Who's Ichiro? Ichiro? What is that? I just, <laughs> and it was just like a cool, like, it became my thing. Like, I was just a guy in <laughs> Toronto, New York, dude, like, a huge Mariners fan. And then, oddly enough, I get into high school and I meet two guys that are Mariners fans longer than me. And we became like super tight because of that. So that's really the origin. Awesome. I can go on for days about that if you can't tell. Yeah. Yeah, so you find the love of the Mariners. You, you kind of lock onto that team. You mentioned uh, some other sports that you're into. Yeah, kind of walk me through the rest of your childhood, I guess, like as far as, you know, other sports teams that, that you followed. At what point did you start to find this creative side that made you want to get into the Jersey side of things and walk me through the, that, the start of that too? Well, I think I think the, the easiest way to say like, how my my uh, sports trajectory went is I, I I was a Sabres guy, and then oh five oh six I think the lockout was, and I think that was the year for the NHL. And I think that was the year that I kind of was just like, all right, I think I'm good at hockey. Like I just it's weird to me. And then you go a whole season, and then and then you realize like I never really was paying attention anyway. So <laughs> I, from that point, really never stayed into hockey. And I try, dude, I try so hard because especially being out here now, like just seeing the commercials that are like advertising for things at home or like Rob Ray, like 
calling the games and like before Rick Jenner passed, just like hearing this voice was just kind of like a comforting thing being away from home. So I, I've tried to get it to get into the Sabres. I've been trying to get into the Kraken. I mean, I just, I really can't. I, I just, I don't know. It's not that, but I guess I say all that to say this. By like 05, 06, I, that's all I cared about when it came to sports was baseball. I mean, okay. I, I was playing in town league and a bunch of my friends really were into baseball. And like I said, those two dudes that I met, uh, Guillory and Jimmy, they're my literally like two of my best friends. And it just became like a bond for us. And then it turned into who's getting the MLB extra innings package this year. And we always had it in my house. So we'd always watch the games in my house. And that's the thing too, bro. 14, 15, 16, 17 years old, Mariners games don't start until 10 o'clock at night. On the yeah. Show. So we would just be sitting in my house, fucking staying up until two in the morning. And I've always told the story, like anybody who's a Mariner fan here or like in Idaho or Montana or California, or whatever, like, and then they go, oh, like, what? Uh, uh, and, and I'm like, listen, you might think you're a fan, but you have no idea what it's like to watch <laughs> the, 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 <laughs> the 2008 to 2011 Mariners and stay up until two o'clock in the morning to watch them. The Felix pitches bins off for seven innings and the lose one, nothing like Man. you have no idea what it's like to be <laughs> that level of a Mariner fan. And then not to mention to be a Bills fan period. It's like, <laughs> I mean, and that's the other thing too. I was a Buccaneers guy for a little while too, when I was younger. Um, I like the orange jerseys to start off with. So I guess I guess I went Sabres, Bucks I was super into for a little bit. And then my buddy told me, he was like, I'll take you to the Monday night game against the Cowboys. Probably like 2007. If you stop being a Bucks fan. <laughs> and I was like, oh, man. The Bills never get a night game especially back then. And I was like, I got to go to that. So sorry, Bucks. Nice knowing you. And then I stopped caring <laughs> about them. And then I had Bill season tickets for like several seasons in a row. And, and, and again, you always care about the local teams in some capacity, but I'm, I'm telling you, dude, I'm locked in from, from, I mean, my, my buddies still make fun of me that I get excited during spring training. Like I just get fired up. Like, like, Oh, it doesn't matter. And it's like, yeah, it kind of does. If you're paying attention to the team and the prospects, and all that kind of shit, like, it, it definitely matters, like, how Cole Young is playing today. And it definitely matters what Harry Ford looks like running the bases or if he's Mitch Hanniger hit a bomb. Yeah, dude, exactly. Love yeah. to see that. It's like, it's like, of course, it doesn't matter for October, but it matters for Mitch Hanniger could still hit a home run. It looks healthy. <laughs> looks like he's excited to be there. Like, yeah. that gets me fired up for the season. So, I think that to answer your second question, how did I start be getting creative with this? It's just the passion behind it completely. It's like, that's where the creativity came from. And, and I don't know how in depth you want to get into that right now, if you had any other questions before that, but it was like an eruption of like, dude, I'm a metal guy. I've always been to like mismatched, fucked up, weird writing. All I've been into that my entire life. So what if I can find a way to put what my style has been the same thing my basically my whole life fitted hat black band t-shirt here today but at some point in my life it was like if you wore a fitted hat you were this if you wore a band shirt you were this if you if you like sports you were this and it's like I was always like no I'm gonna I'm going to wear a Mariners fitted hat and tight black jeans to a death metal show. And that's just how I am. So what I really, my vision initially was to put my personal style, which not to toot my own horn, people kind of always like complimented too. Cause it's like, what the fuck? you're wearing, you're wearing, you're wearing a, a Rainier's hat with a Sabres Jersey, <laughs> but you're wearing like skin tight black jeans and ripped black chucks. Like, what is that? So that's kind of what inspired it really is that people would say, people would comment to me on how my personal style was. And I was like, well, what if I put it together somehow? And that's kind of where Stitch God was born from. Yeah, that makes sense. And I've seen uh, some various other, you know, rendi renditions you've done of different clothing, you know, not just the jerseys, but then also like Slipknot and the other metal yep. bands that you mentioned. Did you, so, so you started to kind of, you know, just put together your own, your own clothing growing up with the hats, with the shirts, with the no. jeans and the shoes. No. 
No. I, oh, you mean putting it together like to, I, I guess to, like you had your own it. style yeah, growing yeah, up, yeah, 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 yeah. and then and then eventually you transitioned that into creating stuff. So, yeah. what was the process of getting into? You no, know, when did you get your first sewing machine? When did you start okay. playing around with those different things? So that is that's where this conversation is going to get interesting because <laughs> I had zero, and when I mean zero aspirations, I mean zero of ever doing anything like this at any point in my life. But what happened was the battle jackets I wear, which I'm hoping you've seen pictures of, I posted two of my own personal ones and I'm, I wear them as much as I can. And it's a, like an accessory kind of thing that goes over what you're wearing, kind of like you'd wear a coat or whatever. Yeah. Um, that is a thing that metal kids have been doing since the eighties. And there's actually a really dope documentary. I forget the name of it. It's about the thrash metal scene, though, in like the early 80s in California, Bay Area, Metallica, Slayer, Exodus, mm. all those bands were kind of like how, how like Pearl Jam and all them were here. All those guys were like in the Bay Area, just going up and down California, just rocking out. And my whole life, you'd see you'd see the big patch on the back and then and the, and the patch is scattered everywhere. But in that documentary, and this is not even that long ago, this is probably like a year, not even a year ago that I found this out. You put the big patch on the back of it because if the band you were going to see you didn't like, you would turn your back and face <laughs> so that your back was facing the stage. So you could say, this is the band that we like, sorry, or instead of booing the guys off the stage or whatever. And I thought that that was really cool. But I say all that to say this. My first Battle Jackets, I was like attempting to hand sew, which is like, I think how most people would do that. And a lot of people use dental floss. They do different things because back back in the day, the 80s, you're just a metal kid, you, you get a patch from a band, you like, you don't know how to use a sewing machine or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So I was doing that. My first jacket I put together in like 2013. So I kind of was tinkering around with like, but it was a, just a thing for me. But how did I start sewing is a completely different, I mean, out of this worldly off from what we've been talking about situation. And I know I'm rambling a lot already, but that is a, no, kind of a long story. It's kind of a long story, but I could just sum it. I could try to sum it up the best that I can. My goal my entire life was to, once I became a Mariners fan, once I got into the culture of Seattle, once I liked a lot of the music that came from here, was to get here, to be here somehow. Mm -hmm. And I remember writing in like, like school papers, like I'd like to work for the Mariners someday. I'd like to work for the Mariners someday. I don't know how. I'm not going to be a baseball player. I'm not going to be a GM. I could yeah. be a couch GM, maybe. Yeah. I don't know if I could do that as well as you. <laughs> I always we just had this like this thought where like it'll all make sense. I'll get there. Something it'll make sense. I'll get there. I'll get. I don't know. And the first time I ever came to Seattle was in 2015 for opening day. And that was the first time that I saw the Mariners in. At that point, how long was I a fan for? 14 years at that point? That was my first time seeing them play in Seattle. Because everywhere yeah. else, I'd have to go all over the country. That was near me, drivable, whatever. That was my first time getting on a plane, all that, dude. So it was an exciting, exciting moment for me to come out here. And I was in the team store. And I had experience working at the New Era headquarters flagship store in Buffalo. And hats have always been my, I guess, my thing. And that's kind of what I always wanted to get into. If, like, if I could, if I could, I, would, I wouldn't trade my life now, but if I could go the same way, but had got into the designing of hats and that kind of thing prior to this hat boom that we just had, that was kind of annoying. But if I could have been into hats, that's what I would have liked to do. So I got to talking with the dude. And as you can see, I could have the gift of gab for sure. And I get talking with the dude uh, that's like the manager guy at the team store. And I was like, what does it take to like get hired here? And he's like, and at that time I was like thinking this is this big, cool job. And now I know it's just like, they'll take anybody that they could get to work, <laughs> to work in the stadium if they like at that point. But at that time I was just like, yeah, maybe that's the thing. And I remember leaving Seattle and in 2016, I, we might, and this is me, 2015. So it was probably, we probably came back 
another time in 2015. And then we definitely came back for the Bills Monday night game in 2016 against the Seahawks. So that was another taste of, of Seattle. And I was like, yeah. but the whole time, every situation that I got in every time I was in Seattle, I was like, man, this is, this feels right here, man. Something feels right here, dude. And I'll never forget. I went into Glow's, Glow's restaurant on Capitol Hill. And it was on Easter Sunday. It was the first first time that I was out here. And I go into the place. They have a little bit of a wait, but they're like, hey, while you're waiting, here's some coffee. Like, let's go hang out outside. And the, and the people walking by, like, they're giving coffee to random people. And I'm just like, oh, what is going on here? And then we go back in, get seated. There's metal music blaring out of the kitchen. <laughs> All the waiter dudes are, like, covered in tattoos and have a beard. And I'm just like, bro, what is this feels right. Like something here feels right. And I, and it was like weird because I was telling myself my whole life prior to that, like, you got to get there, man. Something is there for you. Cause in Buffalo, dude, nothing against Buffalo. I love it. I really do. But like, you're going like one direction or another there. You're either, and again, no offense to my city. It's a beautiful place. It's hardworking people. My dad is a hardworking dude. My mom is a hardworking dude. Everybody that I know is hardworking, but they're at a plant or they're working at Geico or they're still a bartender or whatever it is. And for me, like, I wasn't going to go work at a factory job, dude. I could barely sit still sitting here talking to you. Yeah. Like, I can't do that. So my whole... My whole like attempts of like thinking that way was like, I just want to get out of Buffalo. And I'm sitting at a bar one day, a dive bar in Buffalo. And I'm sitting with a guy and I'm telling him all this. I'm like, I gotta get out of here, man. Like, I gotta figure this out. I gotta get out of here. And he goes, he goes, everybody needs to leave Buffalo at least once to see if it's their home or just where they grew up. And I will never forget that guy saying that to me because it like, it's like something clicked. So. We go, go out to the Monday night game, come back, and then the plan starts of like, okay, how much money do I got to put together? What do I got to do? And I, it, was a, it was a whole thing, too, because I was going to move here. So I didn't have a very reliable vehicle at the time. I was rushing to get it. I got a van. I was rushing to do that. Had a whole plan figured out. Got hired at the Mariners team store. And I was like, yo, all right. So now I'm going there. Get, I got a job, whatever. Sick. I get in my van, I come out here, I move into a house with five complete strangers, which, I mean, dude, going from, I was in a, I was in a, a long-term relationship at that point and living with that person and my boys up until that point, and then prior to that, my family. So I go into this house and it's just complete five people that I've never <laughs> talked to, met before. And I had a room in this house and I was like, okay, man, I'm here, let's do this. And that was March of 2017. So I was here for opening day, March of 2017, working in the hat wall in the team store. Okay. Get to about April, May, and I am getting killed on money. I'm just not making enough to survive here. I had no idea. I didn't think of it because I'd only vacation here. And by April, I was like, I got to go. But in that four-month span, a lot of conversations, met a lot of people, really enjoyed it, really enjoyed my time, enjoyed discovering who I am, that kind of thing. And I had got to chatting with the guy that did the jerseys for the Mariners, the jersey guy. Mm -hmm. And he'd come in and he'd pick stuff up and he'd have to walk by me by the hat wall. You know the hat wall, obviously. Yep. There's a door right there. He'd have to walk by every day to go grab the jerseys for the day. And every day, what's up, dude? What's up, dude? Jerry, good to see you, man. Hey, what's going on, man? How many steps did you take today? Oh, dude, how was your weekend? That kind of thing. And every, you know, you know how guys are. We yeah. become friends after four times of just saying, what's up? <laughs> so I tell him like a, a, a version of this story that I just told you. And I told him how important it was for me to not become like everybody else that I've ever known in my life. And, and I wanted to be in Seattle, but I just can't afford it. I just can't figure it out. So before I left, I went up to say what's up to this dude, to say peace out, whatever. And I get to chatting with him and I'm, and I, and I'm like, he's like, you know what, dude? If you want to come back, I got a job for you. And I was like, dude, I have no idea how to sell. Like, what are you talking about? He goes, if you come back, 
I will teach you how to do this. And I had seen him in action up there, dude, doing heating the jerseys, talking to people, showing up and down, going crazy. And I was like, bro, what? He goes, if you want it bad enough, dude, and you want to come back here, I got a job for you. I was like, all right. And I kept it in the back of my head, got his number. I go back home. Said relationship failed instantly once I got home. And that was partially the reason why, one of the main reasons why I went back. So then all of a sudden, heartbreak is now one of the motivating factors. Like, okay, now it's really time to figure it out. But at that time, I was talking about going to Charlotte. I was talking about going to London, England. I was wow. talking about going to California. One of my boys is in Los Angeles. At the time, one of my boys was in Portland. I had all these ideas, but it was always Seattle's where I wanted to be. So I'm at a Bills game, and this dude shoots me a message probably in like November or December of 2017. He goes, hey, man, I don't know if you've been like thinking about it or you've got any kind of thoughts about it, but if you want to come out, I got a room for you in my house, and I got a job for you. Just bring your clothes. Let's go. And I was like, man. <laughs> and by May, I had a plan. And I came back out here. I moved into this, into my still boss's house. And then began the, it was like two or three days of like, okay, let me get situated. Let me figure it out. And then it was like, okay, you're at the shop at 8 a.m. I'll see you there. And I started with heating jerseys. I started with laying out the, the arch. I started with learning how to take things apart. And then eventually by September of the 2018 season, because I was only heating jerseys at first, and then Jerry was selling it. Mm -hmm. By September of, of the 2018 season, he had me out of the sewing machine trying to figure it out. And then that entire off season, I was in there 40 hours a week, asking questions, learning, figuring out how to sew, but most importantly, learning how to sew quickly. Because mm -hmm. in that, that, that job specifically, you got to turn a jersey around to somebody from when they give it to you to when they leave. So that, that was his whole business model. 40 hours a week minimum, really. I'm sure I was late a lot, so it was probably more like 38 and a half <laughs> hours a week, but whatever. I'm never on time. As you know, I just was late to you. <laughs> yeah, you're good. But, hey, listen, that's just, that's just part of what personality that I have. But by the time the 2019 season came around, his plan, he had been doing that job for since the stadium opened. So at that time, it was like, 19 years in a row plus the seahawks plus the all that he i mean he does everything around town it's ftc wow. sports letter he does it all man if you, and you wonder you wonder why i'm so passionate about this stuff because this dude kind of instilled it into me but by the 2019 season dude i was in there by myself throwing to the wolves so that's how i learned how to sew completely wow. under pressure is how i learned how to sew with a broken heart and with nobody around me and I, like I said, I moved out here and I didn't know anybody, dude. So I was purely motivated to learn how to sew good so I didn't have to go back to Buffalo again. Yeah. So that's a long version of your answer, I guess. Yeah, that's awesome. And yeah, I mean, the best way to learn is by is by doing, right? And you no can only problem. learn so much by reading from a book or in concepts, but by actually putting you know, the yarn onto the jersey or pen to paper and actually doing it, that's how you really learn how to do it that's awesome so so 2019 was when you're full-time by yourself up there in that team store throwing yeah. Out jerseys. yeah and i and i remember one of the first like team ones that i had to do the fun story that i feel like i can tell now and i'll decide if we can after i'm done saying but it was no because people know that i do the jerseys now at this point and anybody that's looking at you or looking at me they hopefully recognize the fact that I'm, i've been doing that for a while now it was kyle seager and he got hurt and like it might have been in spring training and then they called him back up on the road and when they got back to seattle he had lost some weight from whatever he was doing to rehab or whatever so his jersey didn't fit him right his home one and they don't normally put those on until like right before the game is going to start so it was a situation of oh no he doesn't like how it fits so they had to run up to me <laughs> and it might have been singing the national anthem dude like i remember it being like it might not have been that late it was late enough that that they that they came up and were like, "Whatever you're doing, stop! Like we gotta do this like right now." So wow. that was the first taste that I got of like the pressure of what that job is and how important it is to be like, because I could half-ass the couch GM 
and I could half ass the the married in 2022. But if you get into that mindset at any point during your day, and then Kyle Seeger's jersey comes up, and you're like, eh, that can't happen. So I I I full force. Every, so this year, March 28th, I turn into another guy until the middle of October, hopefully this year. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And that was not what I have always been like. And I don't really work hard in many things, but I, if it's something that I really care about. It's some, and so, again, if I got hired by the Rays or I got hired by the, the, the Pirates to do the same job, it wouldn't be the same. Like, I got to basically the pinnacle of what I could have done. And you don't think about the Jersey guy. So when I'm right, I'm in seventh grade writing, I want to work for the Mariners. Who's thinking of the Jersey guy? You know what I mean? And not and that's the cool part to me too, because it's different and it's like a it's like a different view of the game and how it all works and and but dude, fixing guys' pants and stuff, like that's something you really have to like take you have to care about completely. And that's why I'm so offended about what's happening right now in the Jersey uniform world. Because that Kyle Seeger jersey, dude, you could have you could have eaten off of it. Like that that and that was my first time ever doing it. And if you think that the last one that I did that I did, I didn't care as much. I care more about it now. So it's like every time you just care more about how it looks because it's a real representation of like like look good, feel good, dude. Like you're not right. gonna see it, you're not gonna see a, a um like you can go anybody who wears a uniform, you're not gonna see a cop with his shirt untucked right you're not gonna you're not gonna see that and because they respect that so these players it's the same thing and i've said it a million times there's some guys that work their entire life to get that moment where that jersey's hanging up with their last name on it dude ryan court was the first one that i did him or it was either him or it might have been ryan court or tim lope the first call up that i remember that i did myself and i was like Dude, this is like, and then you meet the family and everybody's excited. And it's just like, dude, this has to look good. Yeah. It has to look good because they're going to take a million pictures. And this is going to be a story that this guy might tell his kid right. one day. Like, this is the jersey that I, that I wore the, when, I, when I went to the show, when I got called to the show. Or even if, let's say for the first time ever, a guy pitches a no-hitter with the opposite hand that he threw with. <laughs> and the Hall of Fame wants the jersey it could be immortalized forever dude yeah you should have your heart and soul behind that to make sure that it looks good and especially because i want to make stt sports lettering look good i want to make my boss look good because he cares that much so that seat that i'm sitting in now there the same guy sat there for 19 years prior to me being there as often as i am and i respect the shit out of that because of what he did for me right to take a chance on a complete stranger to be like dude I'm going to teach you. I mean, he could have had me come all the way out here and I could have been a dumbass. You know what I mean? And I could have, I mean, he literally, I, I, I say that I, I'd like to be the first phase of his retirement plan because I know he told me that the Seattle Mariners, when he started doing lettering, was his pie in the sky because he's a big baseball guy. So it was so important for him to have the Mariners. And I, I respect the shit out of that, dude. So I try every, my absolute hardest to, to make sure everything that I touch there looks really great and that everybody that comes in like you has a ex great experience and that they're happy to be there because I remember going into that stadium for the first time and it was one of the best days of my life to that point and I want and, and it could be somebody who's had season tickets for 20 years and they're like oh, I'm just going to the parking lot but it could be that person's very first time man and they save their money and they and they came from far away or they flew from a different country, dude, to come yeah. to watch the Mariners play. And for them to walk in and have an incredible experience, for me to recreate every time my first feeling in there for somebody else is like the, is one of the most important things in the world to me, that everybody that walks into Safeco has like the best experience that they ever could have anywhere. Yeah. I love that. I love that passion. And that's amazing because like these jerseys that I got, you know, these are going to be hanging in my closet for the rest of my lifetime. Basically, my kids will be wearing them eventually. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So, so I mean, like Colt Emerson comes to Seattle after getting drafted. You're up there making that jersey for him. It, do you do you do all those jerseys also or? So it, de it depends. So my my job is 
they have that figured out. Okay. For the most part, like by spring training, they kind of have an idea of like, okay, we got to, I don't know the full way that it's done, like the way that they order them, but they have an idea. So Julio's jerseys, they know they need. They need JP's jerseys. They know they need that. So they have those things ready to go. Guys that are like kind of on the fringe that might get called up, they'll have that ready to go. But if there's an emergency situation, a trade, right. a guy gets called up because of an injury, that's what I'm there for. So the one that I remember doing, um, the one I remember doing for sure was George Kirby's first start or his yeah. or one of his first ones. Yeah. I, I did the jersey he wore than his first win. I know that for sure. I think I did. I think I did Emerson Hancock, maybe his first start, because that was a weird situation too. So that, but like, it's a lot of like bullpen guys too, though, or like, yeah, that won't be around for too much, like too long and stuff. But there's always, there was just, there was a lot of situations last year where because um, of the advertisement that wasn't there, the guys patch was on a different arm depending on which way you hit. So if they were to order the jerseys, we have to put the patches on the sleeves of – so there's situations like that. But all of them, no, we do not. Gotcha, yeah. And then a couple questions. So I'm curious, like, how many jersey orders you get in on an average day, how long it takes you to make a jersey from start to finish, and then getting into after that, you know, talk, getting into the customizations that you've been doing and when that, when that all started. Yeah, so I do want to I do want to decipher that Stitch God and Paul are two separate yep. things. So anything that I do in the stadium is Paul. Anything I do outside of the stadium is Stitch God. So in the stadium, it all depends on it depends on a lot of factors because the the longest part of of doing a jersey, especially now that a lot of them are heat pressed. The longest part of it for me is to just pull the lettering out of the box. Because I usually just do, so if I have 20 in front of me, I'll grab the lettering for all 20 of those, put them aside, and then just kind of bang through them, and then whatever. The one that's sewn, it also depends. I, I remember I was a couple years ago, I was timing myself uh, sewing Rodriguez because of how many we were doing. And I was averaging about 12 minutes per jersey. Jeez. Yeah, that's from beginning to end. Fast. Yeah. yeah, no, yeah, I mean, dude, because again, if you're trying to make sure that 35 to 40 people get their jersey back, there's no other option besides doing it fast. Yeah. And also carefully as well. Like, I mean, it, it, there's a difference between just ripping and it looking good and also going fast. I was averaging about 12 minutes on Julio, but I do this thing sometimes where there's like a group of people like waiting. Again, I'm sure you've been to that area. If there's a group of people waiting, I'll ask somebody to like call out how long you think this one will take. And I'll, I've gotten, <laughs> I remember a couple of years ago, I was doing like D Gordon youth funds, like in under four minutes, like sewing oh, it. Word. Yeah, dude. Cause it's like, it's not very, a lot of like curves and stuff on the home jersey. But like, if I was going to do like a Sunday one, let's say number 41, that would take me probably like three minutes. Jeez. Maybe less. Yeah. It depends. It all depends on how I'm feeling that day, too. Yeah. That, that's wild. That's that, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And that, and that's, and that's how things are probably like two years ago. Now, like I said, it's a lot more of like heat pressing and stuff. So that'll depend it, safely. I get there three hours before the game starts. I try to leave by like the eighth or ninth inning. It hasn't happened that way in like two years though. Um, from three hours before to the, to the ninth inning, we'll say I can probably get through by myself. 40 45 max wow yeah and well, over when we were when i was at the kraken though that was a whole different thing because a, a hockey jersey you got to put the name onto the nameplate, and then you got to do a few years ago when we were doing that was another whole thing the kraken jersey launch was one of the craziest things i've ever been a part of when it comes to this job that i do which i guess I'm an all-around Jersey guy because the Kraken job was separate from STP. So that was a whole separate thing. But you got to do a front, two sleeves, back, and a nameplate on a hockey jersey. So that is not the same kind of time frame. But I was also averaging, when we were trying to get 
Bro, because every Kraken jersey that was ordered anywhere was coming from the same place for the most part from the, at the start. I had a warehouse, and then it was me and whoever was around that day trying to get as many as possible. I was averaging, I could probably get a Kraken jersey from beginning to end, just heating it on to um, like under three minutes for that too. Jeez. Yeah, yeah that's so a, we were trying to get through fine. like 75 to 100 a day, and that was the plan back then. So it all depends on what it is. Real quick, if you could walk me through the differences between, you know, stitching a jersey versus heat pressing, when that all started, and, you know, which jerseys might be heat pressed versus stitched. Um, well, for, for I can't remember how many years it's been now. It was probably when Nike took over, like, whatever. What year was that? 2020? I don't remember. But I know lacrosse baseball from the stadiums that I've been to, the me was heating jerseys only for however long. So to get a replica jersey sewn in Seattle was something very different than how it would go anywhere else in baseball for a long time. So I know that for sure. That changed on the City Connect jersey though. Like we stopped sewing the replica jerseys when they dropped the City Connect jersey. So whenever that yeah. was, that's how long in the Mariner world that the replica jerseys had not been stitched. So it hasn't been that long. It was like and last May? Yeah, yeah. It, it, within the last year, for sure. Or, yeah. Wait, did that didn't come out before? Do we have I forget which month, All-Star? but it was last year. It was before the All-Star. Um, it was I don't the same say season? It was around... Yeah, it was last year. Damn, bro. So this is how, this is how like, <laughs> spun around. I could have sworn that that City Connect was two years ago, but I guess you're right. Yeah. And then so the all start. Yep. That was their big thing because they were like, dude, we're not going to be able to. There's no way. Like, there's just no way. Because on the City Connect jersey, I don't know if I have one handy with the number. Because I take the letters off of everything and the numbers off. Um, it's three different colors on the number. And the way that it's sewn, that would take forever, but you couldn't do it with the lettering. Um, that was coming from whoever that was going on the replica jerseys because it's the way that it looks. If you were to try to sew that, it would look crazy. Yeah. So that was when we stopped sewing replica jerseys. So I guess you're saying May, and then the All Star jersey, the same thing. The, the one, they said once the City Connect goes, no, nothing else replica is getting sewn. But those Nike jerseys, like I said, or even though I guess the Nike ones were the first ones that did it. So about it's so about 2020. That's got some kind of like eye power, like adhesive behind it. Because the fronts of the jerseys haven't been sewn for years either. The Majestic yeah. stopped doing that too, the replica ones. They got some kind of high-powered like adhesive on that where it's not meant to be sewn. But the reason you sew a jersey is so it doesn't fray or it doesn't curl or it doesn't come off, obviously. Right. But that, that was something that was important to what we did in, in Seattle for the longest time was that we sewed everything. It was a, it was a kid's... Uh, um, kids d gordon jersey we're gonna sew the name onto it so everybody gets the feeling of like okay yeah it's kind of like how the how the boys are wearing there so even if it wasn't the same caliber of it the jersey it still looks sharp enough that like and i'll be able to keep it longer because the letters aren't going to come off because i dried it too much yeah yeah i remember uh the the day of the city connect drop last year so i live in uh ridgefield washington which is like 30 20 minutes north of portland and yeah, so, yeah. like, I saw Atlantis four... Marset there. Sorry, I saw Atlantis Marset there. Atlantis Marset. I saw her there. Yeah, Ridgefield, some RV. Amphitheater oh yeah, yeah, the amphitheater. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's a good spot. Okay. But, yeah, that, that. So that morning, I drove up at like four or five a.m. to get there for the City Connect drop, and I got a jersey done that same day. It took like you know thirty minutes an hour. You guys were tearing it up up there. Yes. So getting into the customizations, let's get into the stitch God part of it. Yeah. When did that, when did that start? That started, uh, the Kraken's first season. I got to chatting with the one dude, his name's Jared Geary. And he is like a retail, like superstar in the world of like, he ran the launch of everything for the, uh, Vegas golden Knights. And then he came over to do the Kraken. He's like a superstar with it. Uh, spent a lot of time with him because we were doing a lot of jerseys and trying to make everybody's experience really good there the first season. And 
we got to talking and I told him about the battle jackets that I had been wanting to get involved in. And I kind of had already started having like some, some thoughts about, okay, well, if I just put some band patches on it, whatever, this and that. And I had told him about that and I told him that I was going to get my own sewing machine. And I guess to answer that question from a long time ago, the first sewing machine that I got is the same one that I learned how to sew at, um, and safe cup, which is pretty sick because I really only know how to use one. So I kind of knew what to do, but I actually have four different machines, two of them that I use at Safeco. Um, I was able to find, and then I got some other ones, but only one of them works right now, but they're, they're from the sixties. So they're not easy to find. So every time that I was able to find one, I was like, okay, even if I don't, I'll figure this out at some point down the road, if it ever, if one of them breaks and I should probably knock on wood because if that breaks i'm gonna be so um i uh i was telling him i was gonna get a machine and like whatever and you know life happens and he randomly came out to me one day and he was like yo did you ever end up getting a sewing machine and i was like like i thought he was trying to bust my ball so i was like oh yeah like i did but like i haven't done anything yeah like whatever he's like when we did the, the vegas we had an option where people could pick like 10 or so patches and have them put onto a jacket. It was like a customizable thing. Kind of like how the jerseys that you could put couch GM on the back. It was like a touch, I think he was saying it was like a touch screen kind of thing where you could pick where you're gonna put them, what it looks like, whatever. He's like, what if we took all these damaged jerseys that we have from the misspellings and the numbers being wrong or at one, at one point somebody put a C on backwards <laughs> which i don't even still to this day know how that happened but that, i kept that in the back of my head by yeah. the way um all the mistakes though they were like they have to damage them out and everything and he goes what if there was some way that we could make something else from these jerseys that are damaged and i was like i don't know why the hell not? let's see what we can figure out so i remember he gave me a whole stack of jerseys and I got so fired up about it that during that game, I was like cutting up, I was like cutting pieces off and like thinking of like, how could this go? How could this look? And like, again, I never designed anything before. Mm -hmm. The battle jacket idea that I had was just putting patches of bands that I liked on a jacket and thinking people would, would rock with it. So he says, yo, take all this stuff. And I remember sitting in my house and going, hmm. What if I took the fight strap off and sewed it to the side? Or what if I did this? Or what if the Kraken logo was the patch on the back, like I was telling you before? Mm -hmm. And I was taking it directly off of a jersey. And then I posted like one jacket. Because at that point, Stitch God, if you go way down, you scroll all the way down my shit. At one point, Stitch God was me just showing what I was doing in the stadium and like what my interactions there. Now I'm out. Of, I can't do that anymore. So it's sitting, like I said, Paul and Stitch God are two separate things now. Yeah. I want to make that very clear to anybody watching this. <laughs> Paul doesn't even know who Stitch God is, yeah. as far as I'm concerned. I would. I posted one jacket and another one that was like my thing, but then by the third one, I had done a Kraken one, and it kind of got some like cool reviews or whatever. And I remember being at games and like telling people there about it. And one of the ladies who was like one of the, like, she's like a founding member or something of the ladies of the crack. And I remember telling them about it. And then they were like, oh yeah, you do one for me. And they gave me like a ladies of the crack and patch. Like I was like an honorary member. It was a whole thing, but that's kind of where it started. And then I had posted that and middle of falling asleep in that gray area where you're not fully asleep yet and your subconscious <laughs> mind is like talking to you but you're not awake yet or you're not asleep yet you're right in the middle and i remember thinking like i have a mariner's jersey and i got all this lettering that i've been pulling off of shit for years because like i told you one of the first things i had to learn was how to take a name off of a jersey where you could still use the jersey to replace something or if something's misspelled or it's crooked I had to know how to take it off cleanly so you could still put it on there and it could still look nice by still using that same jersey. So again, it's like things that I got into my back pocket that I kind of, have, like, again, subconsciously though, learning how to do, and I was just gathering all this lettering. Cause I remember it was Cano and Cruz. Once they were gone, all of a sudden those authentic jerseys were like half price. 
I was like, all right, let me take Cruz off of this one and I'll put Tom Murphy on the back is what I did on one of them. Or I'll take Cano off of this one and I put Gutierrez on the back of it or whatever, whoever. I remember I did a, I definitely did, oh, I'm not going to remember his name, Guillermo Heredia I did at one point. Because I was just, you know, I'm, I've always been a not the guy kind of guy. Mm-hmm. So uh, Guillermo yeah. Heredia was my guy. Michael Gutierrez was my guy back in the day. I was a big Lotus Martin guy. The only the only exception of that is I was an Ichiro fan before he was Ichiro, though. You know what I mean? So it was like, yeah. I was still thinking the same thing. Like, this dude might not ever be good, but whatever. So I'm about to fall asleep, and I'm thinking, what if I put a jersey together that was the entire, like, form history of Ken Jr.? He wore this jersey, this number, these numbers, that. What if it was just kind of, like, all over the place? And then I fall asleep. I don't think anything of it. I wake up the next day. I go to work, and I'm sitting at my sewing machine at the shop, working away. And Joe from Simply Seattle hit me up. He goes, "Yo, your shit is like super dope, dude. I'd, I'd like to fucking like try to put something together with you sometime." And I was like, "Bro, I had this like dream last night that I did this. I didn't know what to call it at that point. I did this jersey where everything was like all over the place. And what if we try to do each one and a Griffey one and see you like it?" And he's like. Fuck it, man. Why not? Let's try it. So I put together an Ichiro one. I put together a green one. The pictures that I have of them are terrible. And even now, I don't really take, like, I hate doing that. Like, I hate having to take a picture of something and make sure the lighting looks good. I hate doing that. Yeah. I hate posting about it. I hate having to, um, like, bombard people to do the algorithm. I hate doing that stuff. <laughs> so, like, at first, you could definitely tell that not only did I know what I was doing, but... I just wanted the guy that was showing the uh, showing what it looked like to know what it looked like, not for it to be presentable. So I sent him the pictures of it. And he goes, dude, this is sick, blah, blah, blah whatever, whatever, whatever. He, we should put him on the website and see if we'll fuck with it. I'm like, all right, cool. So then the next time we talked about it, he goes, so those scramble jerseys, what are you trying to um, get for him? And I was like, scramble jerseys. All right, cool. That might be what we call it. And I was like, scrambles, whatever. And we just kept talking about it. So that's where the name came from of what I call them. And a couple of years ago, or a while ago now, I did do a poll to see, because there's another one, boss calls it something else. He calls it the uh, ransom notes, <laughs> which kind of sounds similar, but scramble. I did a poll. It was unanimous from all the people that follow me and what they should be called. So we kept the scramble. And then they go up on Simply Seattle, and they might have sold out in like two minutes after they posted both of them and i was like whoa dude that's crazy who can we do next so we did griffey and each row again same thing they put it on somebody's saddle they sold in like five minutes dude and then all of a sudden i'm getting follows and i'm getting people interested and yo this is sick this is sick whatever and i did another one then i did another one and then by the like six or seven one them over at simply simply saddle they're like dude you're buying the jersey you're doing all the work, I think you got it now. I think there's enough people that are looking at this or looking for this that like, so that's why I always give credit to Simply Seattle because they didn't have to do that. You know what I mean? And because yeah. they did do that, because of their following they already had, people started paying attention to what I was doing. And that is really when Stitch God that you know now was born because then I was just like, dude, this is like, this is like like a like a like a Kurt Hammett guitar solo happening on a jersey, dude. Because it's out yeah. of control and it's everywhere. It's like <laughs> it's like everything that I am, and, and I and I try to like post when I when I tell the stories in the in the in the caption. I try to like make it clear that like what you're seeing is not somebody like that's like a normal guy doing this. You're seeing somebody literally putting the crazy ADHD ness going on in his head onto a jersey that doesn't make sense on purpose. And yeah. that's kind of where it all came from is that, but then it gradually started going from everything Ichiro wore, everything Griffey wore, okay, did Buner wear this one, to, wait a minute, let me turn this letter upside down. Cause now I'm running out of ways to write Griffey. Let me put the F upside down. Let me see what the E looks like upside down. And I started doing like a, like the numbers upside down and then the, the colors mismatching and then 
even with the last Julio one that I put out, I literally put the number he wore in Arkansas on the back yeah. of this one. So it started turning into like, okay, now let's really celebrate this player's every move. And like, even like the one I did for Marco last year, it was literally a, a celebration of his like baseball history in Washington, all the way down to the number that he wore and what it looked like at Gonzaga. So yeah. It's one of those things where it morphed into what it is now, starting with how it started. Because it didn't, it's never been a set plan. It kind of, it changes every time. Pretty yes. Fast. So with your creative process, you, you mentioned that it's just kind of what's flowing from your brain. So is it a spur of the moment or do you have a list of ideas of players that you want to do and some ideas that you have, or do you just throw a Jersey down? Like, you know, whatever comes to me in this moment is what it's going to be. Both, because I, uh, I'm not a very organized person. So there are times where I try to be, where I'll sit down and I'll go, okay. Because not even that long ago, I, I sat down and I was just sitting there kind of bored. And I went through to see how many of each player I've done. Yeah. Because I had a weird feeling that I'd done like, I've, I've done like too many each rows and I feel like, Maybe I've done too many like Crawfords or whatever. And I sat down and I looked, it was Julio by far that I've done the most of so far, which is, you know, but each row I hadn't, I've hardly done any in comparison. So I was trying to figure out. So I will do things like that where I'll sit down and I'll go, okay, I'd like to do Haggerty. I'd like to do this. I have this one, but everything I write down, dude, I almost never turn the page back. If that makes any sense. So I'll write it down. I'll try to be organized. But once I turn the page and go to the next page of my notebook, I might not ever turn back to see what, what I was thinking because a lot of things I try to do spur of the moment. I try to do – but then there's also, like, if I'm being very honest with you, there's also times where I only have lettering for – because everything I try to take off is something else. So if you get a random bullpen dude's jersey off of eBay and he has three R's in it, and an O, whatever, all of a sudden I might have enough to do Rodriguez. Or So you get all the lettering own. from old jerseys. Yeah. Oh yeah, dude. You gotta see my eBay. I mean it's <laughs> I mean anything that I can find that because like even if I can't even if I can't use the jersey, for example, I try to take everything off of it to go somewhere else at some point. Wow. So like this jersey is the Sabres one, obviously. The the it's too small really for, I mean, like I might have my girl try things on to see if like, it could be like a ladies fit type of thing, but like a hockey jersey, this is for a kid. So yeah. that patch was great though. So I got it literally just to take it off so that can go on something else. So for the most part, what I try to do is take everything off of something else. So if I'm sitting there, like the stitch God one that I just posted, that's, because I had a ton of S's because nobody's got an S in their name. I had a ton of T's. I had whatever. And I was like, let me see. Even Chicago. You take Chicago off, all of a sudden, that's like all the letters I need right there. Yeah. So the spur of the moment is more of how I do it. But there's also the times where I, I'm doing only what I have. Like, because Crawford's always tough because nobody has a W in their name. And then the F's go to, to Griffey. So when I'm looking at a jersey, I'm looking. So if it's Griffey and I'm taking that name off, there's a G, there's an I, there's an F, there's two F's, there's a Y. What else are you putting a Y in now? Yeah. You know what I mean? So nobody's got a Y in their name. So that's usually where I get hung up is on like the Y's and stuff. But I work for a sports lettering company. So if I need to, I've been like, hey, like the, like the, for example, the, the Arkansas Traveler numbers. Like I had those cut, like everything's not used, but at the same time, where am I going to find that? You know? So right. it's, I try to specify too. Like if you read the, if you read the captions, I try to say where everything came from and I just won't say anything if it's new lettering. Yeah. That's awesome. That's, that's really cool that you're, I was kind of curious how you got the lettering, but the, to hear that you just, you know, kind of go on eBay, find the letters that you're looking yeah. for, the logos, that's really cool that you, just pull it off, repurpose it, and turn it into something new. Yeah, dude. I, one of the last one, random ones that I got was a uh, was it Greg Dobbs. I can't. Was that his name? Dobbs. Greg Dobbs. Yeah. So I literally got a Greg Dobbs like team issued jersey, and there's 
D O B B S and then whatever his number was. And then the Jersey becomes a Jersey with nothing yeah. on it, obviously. And then the letters just go cycle back into it. I literally have a tray of letters from all scattered from all over the place. But like I was telling you before, I started with D A N O C R U Z. So at first I had just mad twos, mad threes. And then those letters is what I kind of started everything with. Yeah, and I, I just saw you did your first Damian Lillard basketball jersey, which was sick also. Yeah, um, yeah dude. Cool. Well, yeah, I'm a I mean, Blazers I want... guy. What was that? I'm a Blazers guy. Yeah, and yeah, I, I've gone to a couple Blazers game this year. They're in a rebuild, so it's kind of embarrassing, you know, going and watching them. They, they get blown out. But to see Lillard go somewhere, you know, with Giannis to be able to potentially win something, that's cool to see. It's definitely cool to see, dude. And 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 again, when when you root for a guy, especially in the NBA, like I'm I'm a, I'm a basketball guy for sure. I've only been down there once this year, unfortunately. It was to see uh, Wemin Yama, and that dude, I couldn't believe how tall he was. I was like, dude, on the court, I was like, yo, what? When you root for a guy in the NBA, you want to see him win. You know what I mean? Because it's not a team. It's not like other sports. The NBA, you're rooting for players at some point because they move around too much. Like, I feel like James Harden's been on, like, 10 teams over the last 10 years. Like, I can't keep track of it. Right. Same thing with Durant. Yeah, dude. And that's all. Oh, speaking of which, dude, not to get completely off topic, but I have tickets to see the Suns play on Saturday of this week. And I am so – I've been gassing my girl about it since I, like, since I realized they were playing. I'm so pumped to see him play, dude. Like, I'm so excited to see him play, dude. And I'm about to drop a LeBron jersey tomorrow morning. And it's basically like, that's like my ode to like, I can't believe that in our lifetime, we are witnessing. I mean, dude, you could say whatever you want about Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, like LeBron James is so good still at 40 years old. It's like, it's like, it doesn't make sense in comparison to like how sports normally go. And yeah. I feel, I feel so lucky, no matter what you want to say about LeBron, I had a bad taste in my mouth when he went to the Lakers too. Like that was kind of whack. Like. You like you could have gone to like Oklahoma City and become a god there, dude. Like you know what I mean, and had your own thing, and had like you could have gone to, uh, you could have gone to Portland and been like the oh, guy of all time in Portland. But now you're going to the Lakers, where there's been 15 guys that are like, right, more legendary than you. And why are you going to bring your legacy there? Like when he went to the Heat, that was sick that he did that. But if you want to stay with the Cavs too, like I don't know. Imagine, imagine Damien and LeBron James in Portland. <laughs> dude, and then think about what time that would have been, dude. Like, think about the players that they had at that time. Like, they've had some guys that could play basketball over the last few years. Like, even, like, all the way back to LaMarcus Aldridge, dude. Right. Like, there, there were some guys that could really ball, and it just sucked. Man, does that suck that they couldn't make it happen with Dame, dude. Like, that's just – it's unfortunate. Yeah. But what are you going to do? It doesn't look like it's going to happen in Milwaukee either, though. So, yeah. The Doc Rivers experiment's not working. Yeah. Well, uh, I want to be respectful of your time. One last yeah. topic I want to cover. Go ahead. And so it's a two-part question. Number one, can you confirm on air that you will not be outsourcing to fanatics? And then two, can you please take over the full responsibilities for creating MLB's uniforms moving forward? Man, that's funny. Um, I will tell you this. Like I told you before, I'm only there for a blank jersey that's already there coming into the stadium and I will do my thing on it. So that will never college GM is, is, as far as I'm concerned, will never be outsourced to fanatics ever. <laughs> if I have anything to do with it, but that's also me, dude. Like I can't say what happens in the future. I really hope that the job that I'm doing, I can continue to do until I'm unable to do it anymore. Well, whatever that is, however that is. And that's all I could really say about that. Cause I do. And then if I'm being a hundred percent honest with you, what, what is today's date? It's February, February, 25th? February 25th. Yep. February 25th, 2024. I can tell you that I have not seen these jerseys in person yet. I haven't looked at them. I haven't been told anything about the process of how Mariner jerseys will be done at the stadium. I know absolutely nothing about anything. Basically until I walk in there on opening day, I won't know anything about any of that. All I know is, is whatever my opportunity, and I, I feel so corny about to say this because how much I've always talked shit to like players saying like the, 
the like I'm only here to like win the game or we're looking forward to the next opponent or we're going to yeah. put that one behind whatever cliche shit they say. But as of right this second, I can tell you, I'm just going to do my absolute best with whatever I'm handed. And I'm going to, that's all I can really say. That if it's in front of me, it's going to look as good as it can look. That's number one. And I guess I could turn your question into my answer to it, which is, Eventually, I would like to maybe see if I could get that high up. I mean, why not, dude? I yeah. mean, I'm already kind of like on my hands in it. You can see that there's passion to me with it. The problem with that is, is like I said, I'm not a very organized guy. I'm not really a guy that like seeks out like a, a career opportunity like that. I have no idea how you get into that. I don't know who makes those calls. I don't know where those are being designed. I have nothing. I have no idea about any of that. But what I do know is if I could cause enough of a enough of an impact like I am now what's to say 10 years from now that isn't a possibility I mean I don't know that's I'm also a big it's not what you know it's who you know for sure uh kind of guy so I think that it's one of those things for me where that's a situation of like maybe I'm in the right place at the right time again and because I've met I've met some pretty pretty big players in that stuff so far i know that i've worked with like pretty big lettering companies already um obviously stt is a big deal and they they are they are known throughout the sports world and i will tell you that for sure it's a lot of respect because of like everything outside of before it's a lot of heart that goes into it so there's a lot of respect across all leagues now especially the nfl specifically the seahawks just a lot of respect for my boss which is you know he deserves that but it There's a difference between somebody deserving something and really earning that. And I can tell you that for sure, my boss has earned the the respect that he has in the Jersey world. So during the All-Star game this year specifically, I met some people that have to do with lettering companies. And it's just a lot of those situations, though, where like people like that see the guy heating the jersey and just like, oh, yeah, like if you're needing help, like it's just to them, it might just look like another guy just being and then they're like oh yeah okay buddy like whatever but that's why that's why this is my thing bro if you don't know that's okay because i'm gonna make sure at some point you do one way or another that you'll know one way or another you'll be like wasn't that that guy that i completely brushed off and blew off like 10 years ago damn he's my boss now how the fuck did that happen yes so that's kind of that's kind of the meaning behind yeah that's kind of the meaning behind that so cool. I will give credit to the, I because I always want to give credit to people. Uh, my guy Evan, he because I'd always put the this because that started with me telling people because I'm very superstitious. So somebody would come up and be like, "Oh, yo, like, no, no, sh- don't talk about it. Just, <laughs> just leave it alone, whatever." And then I always wanted my face hidden. So the, like the original pictures that I would be taking, I was going like this. Like my, I always had my head down whether to show the hat. But I've said it a million times already, but I'll say it again. It's Stitch God is more about what I'm doing than who I am. Like I said, Paul doesn't even know Stitch God. You know what I mean? It's way more about what I'm doing than who I am. But then I started using the shush thing because I was superstitious. And that was during the year we were kind of making a little run. So I was using that all the time when I was posting things like, shh, just don't talk about it, man. It's like, it's like you don't talk about a no hitter. Just leave it alone. If it happens, right. it happens, whatever. So the one day this dude, Evan, um oh, he's killing me i can't remember his his instagram name i'll send it to you after this so you could like give him some shout out for this but <laughs> he came up to me to take a picture and he was like yo we should do this in the picture because you always post that i was like yeah it's actually kind of hard and then i realized that if i kept doing this it's kind of covering my face like kind of giving right. the, the 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 hidden thing so i want to give full credit to him that's why i started doing that but then that turned into don't talk about it be about it I just love to hear the the origin story of what you're doing and the passion behind it and, you know, the explanations. And I know, you know, when I put up that poll earlier today, you were like leaving the negative questions. Yeah, or comments. So what, I guess, what's your, you know, of course you get negative feedback, you get positive feedback. Yeah. Do you use that negative as like a fuel for what you're doing? And it's like, they just don't understand what you're doing. Yeah, it's there's 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 a couple aspects to that because I I am I'm somebody that respects like rock stars. I respect athletes. I respect people that are that are taking on things 
that are like bigger than some people understand and whatever they're going through that other people don't see. I re- I've always respected that. But it was once I started doing the stitch job thing, I saw a documentary about Derek Jeter and I've heard LeBron James talk and I've heard Kobe Bryant talk and Tom Brady and that like murderous, like killer focus and just like, I don't give a fuck what you have to say. I'm going to do my thing no matter what kind of attitude is super inspiring to me. So that's one reason why I embrace people not understanding it. And that's fine. Like I just told you, that's fine. If you don't get it now, you're going to be behind when you see that a hundred times. You're going to, yeah. you're going to see that X on Julio Rodriguez's hat and be like, where have I seen that before? Okay. It's because you are not, you aren't willing and it all goes to in, in being inclusive in a community kind of thing too, where it's like, it's like a, it, it's, I'm trying to build like a, a, we're gonna end up, we're gonna end up referring to it as Mariners Mafia, but I'm trying to build like a cluster of people that are all just like misfits that are like wanting to be, like if you wanna be, if you wanna be questioning why something looks different than you're used to, then that's your personality. And you tell me everything you need to tell me about you. If you can't look at something and go, okay, like, that's how he wants to go, then that's fine. So that's number two. But I also have Rage Against the Machine lyrics tattooed on me that says anger is a gift. Mm-hmm. So the more people that are like, you can't, you shouldn't, you won't, you can't, you can't, you can't, the more I'm like, word, watch me then. You're going to see me do it. Just like, every, bro, I love telling this part of my story too. It was so many people in my life that were like, Mariners, yeah, right, dude. You're just going to end up be, you're going to end up working at Rite Aid, like down the street, man. No way, dude. Mariners, are you kidding me? You can't do that. That's not a real goal. And I listened to Howard Stern talk about how he became the greatest radio personality of all time, an, an, a, a, a killer when it comes to broadcasting. He changed the world as far as I'm concerned. The way that he started talking about like sex and open things that people were afraid to talk about. I believe that that changed the way that people thought about things that everybody thinks about. I hear him talking about how he came up in radio and he never had a plan B. All yep. these guys you see doing crazy shit, they never had a plan B. They said, I'm going to do one thing and that's the only thing that they think about. And that was all I thought about. I want to work for the Mariners somehow. And everybody in my life told me that I couldn't do it. You're going to move out there. You'll be back. I did go back, but <laughs> you're not going to go back to Seattle. You you could never pull it off. You whatever X, Y, and Z. And I did that. So anger is a gift. So if you let people charge you that way, then when somebody says something nice, it's like even better. So like every, every negative thing that I hear about what I do and people that don't understand it, I got to be honest with you, dude, it's not a lot. It's not a lot of people saying like, you're a fucking loser. I mean, there has been a few like weirdos in my inbox that are like, you're, you're some whatever this and that but it's like okay dude that's cool that's fine wear the same jersey that ten thousand other people are wearing that's fine do your thing that's cool right. yeah yeah for like eight, every negative comment there's going to be 10 people that are positive you know and yeah bro like your stuff and what i've noticed you know with the content content that i put out with negative comments you could either like some of them okay there might be constructive criticism that you can take some feedback and yeah. be like okay i'll change this next time but then some it's like all right he's just out here trolling for no reason and then you just set it aside you don't even think about it twice so you can't different you can't differentiate it. yeah yeah because if, if somebody's saying like hey dude when you when you say the letter uh c you kind of spit everywhere that's different than going kill yourself you know what i mean like there's <laughs> there's way too right. there's two different ways to go about it but with with my whole thing that i do if somebody says that looks stupid it's supposed to dude that's the point the whole point is that this jersey is a mimic of someone who isn't perfect it's not supposed to be and if you really want to see how i sew when the when the pressure's on there's two different versions of that because when i when i'm sewing a jersey for a a person that's supposed to look accurate and right and you're not going to see it look better anywhere and i promise you that even on the field all of a sudden by the way (laughs) which i don't know how that really happened but that's a whole different thing that you kind of didn't bring up fully, by the way. But mine is sewn choppy and ripped on purpose because it's supposed to look like a dingy jersey that somebody else would have thrown out, but you want it because that's kind of maybe how you feel that day. You know what I mean? 
Right, right. It's yeah. For everybody on purpose. For sure. I love it. Well, Paul, Stitch God, really appreciate your time tonight. Like I mentioned, we'll have to find a time to link up when I'm up in Seattle and maybe yeah, do bro. some behind the scenes content. I would love to do that, dude, because like every like everything I've told you here, it all has a story behind it. It's not just a jersey. It's not just a hat. It's there's a whole story behind everything that I do. And I hope to, to have that story to as many people as possible. Because at the end of the day, my my goal in everything that I do is to just always remind somebody that like you can you can do something if you want to, man. Like it's very possible. I'm living proof of that. And I try to express that as often as I can. So maybe if it didn't get in your algorithm last time, it does this time. And, and you can read somebody say, yeah, man, I'm a fuck up too, but that's fine. You get to tomorrow, man. You can get there. It's going to sure. work. You can have it. You can do it. And no matter what that is. So I, I just want to have like a positive message behind all of it. So I appreciate you letting me get that out to you. Absolutely. Man. Is watching. Out to center. This is great. It's way back. It is gone.